Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on analog modulation. Our topic for today's discussion is to discuss why we need to have three different types of amplitude modulation. Okay, so they are actually denoted as DSBFC, which stands for double side band full carrier, double side band suppressed carrier, and single side band suppressed carrier. So this video, we are going to understand why we need to have three forms of amplitude modulation. This will be the part six series discussion. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about analog modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please send me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more info from this channel. Thank you so much. Okay, firstly, let's understand why we need to have double side band suppressed carrier. Okay, this diagram here shows the double side band full carrier because you can clearly see that there is a power okay, at the carrier frequency for double side band full carrier. The total power is equal to the power at the lower side band plus the carrier power plus the power at the upper side band. So these three components actually contribute to the total power. Okay, most of the power residue in the carrier okay, and is not useful in carry any information. Okay, all the information are carried in the two side band. The carrier does not carry any information. Hence, okay, it is logic to support press the carrier, okay, which means that we don't transmit the carrier power. Okay, by doing so, okay, we have the double side band suppressed carrier signal. Okay, so this is double side band suppressed carrier, okay, which means that we're going to suppress this carrier as seen over this diagram here. Okay, we don't have the carrier anymore. So what is the advantage of double side band suppressed carrier over double side band full carrier. Okay, for carry the same information, okay, the total transmit power is less for double side band suppressed carrier. Okay, for the total power for double side band suppressed carrier, is simply just the power at the lower side band plus the power at the upper side band. Okay, we don't have any carrier power. And because we take away the carrier power, Okay, the double side band suppressed carrier actually transmit lesser power, which means that it is actually more power efficient. Although there is a power saving for double side band suppressed carrier, okay, the bandwidth of the double side band suppressed carrier is still the same as double side band full carrier, okay, which means that the bandwidth still remain at two times the frequency of the modulating signal as shown over here. Okay, remember, if we want to find the bandwidth, is always the highest component minus away the lowest component. However, after mention about the advantage, there is also disadvantage of double side band suppressed carrier as compared to double side band full carrier. Okay, the key distinct disadvantage is in fact, okay, for double side band suppressed carrier, they have a complex modulation and the modulation circuit. Okay, hence, okay, you can conclude that it is much more expensive okay, in terms of component in order to recover back the original signal from double side band suppressed carrier. Next, okay, why we need to have single side band suppressed carrier? Okay, in double side band suppressed carrier, okay, the information is transmitted twice once in each of the two side band. Okay, so take a look over here. So this is what you mean. We need to send the signal twice, one at the lower side band and another one at the upper side band. 
Therefore, if one of these sideband is suppressed as well, it will become the single sideband suppressed carrier signal. So this is what you mean. Either the lower sideband or the upper sideband. So either one, they actually form the single sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, however, you can see from here, the bandwidth of the single sideband suppressed carrier okay, becomes smaller, okay, which is the frequency of the modulating signal. Okay, remember earlier on is two times the frequency of the modulating signal. But for single sideband suppressed carrier, okay, the bandwidth is actually just the frequency of the modulating signal. Okay, however, due to the decrease in bandwidth, Okay, single sideband suppressed carrier transmission, okay, they have lesser noise. Okay, you can see from this formula here, this N, okay, which is the noise, is equals to KTB. This is a Boltzmann constant. This is a temperature in Kelvin. This is bandwidth. If we have lesser bandwidth, which means that we are going to have lesser noise. So single sideband suppressed carrier has lesser noise. Okay, what is the advantage and disadvantage of single sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, let's come to the advantage. Firstly, okay, it will be saving in power and bandwidth. Okay, so like what I mentioned clearly, for this total power for single sideband suppressed carrier, is simply just one of the sideband, either the lower sideband or the upper sideband. Okay, which means that they actually transmit lower power. And also the frequency actually reduce, okay, but the key motivation is not to reduce the bandwidth, but is to reduce the overall noise. So therefore, single sideband suppressed carrier have a clear advantage of having lower power, saving the power, and they also have lesser bandwidth, which contribute to lesser noise. Okay, single sideband is also popular okay, with equipment that are small, portable, and require low power consumption. Okay, for example, our cordless phone and walkie-talkie, okay, they are need to be portable, and we want to conserve as much power as possible. Hence, single sideband suppressed carrier is actually preferred for cordless phone and also walkie-talkie. However, there are also disadvantages Okay, the clear distinction is the same as double sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, it actually requires more complex modulation and demodulation circuitry. And hence, they are actually more costly as compared to double sideband full carrier and also double sideband suppressed carrier. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.